All right, so you got a carbureted vehicle, uh, and recently it's been flooding. You can't, haven't really done anything different to it, uh, except you maybe put a fuel pump on it, maybe change the fuel filter, um, and now it floods at idle. Not all the time, but it floods out at idle. But if you put it in neutral and keep it off idle, it, it won't die. Uh, but if you leave it in gear, at a stoplight, that thing dies. You have to throw it in park, put the pedal to the floor and crank it, clear it out and start it up. And everybody just looks at you like you're an idiot. I'm an idiot. I know that, so I'm used to the looks. But today, uh, I'll show you a solution I found to it after doing a little bit of internet research and some testing on my own. So, stick around and we'll get to it. Okay, so just to recap. Carburetor's rebuilt, float settings good, needle and seat good. What I found out was I've got too much fuel pressure. Now the previous owner put a new fuel pump on this and had problems with it flooding ever since. So now that I know everything else is right, I know that that fuel pump is putting out too much pressure. These old carburetors like somewhere between three and five pounds and it doesn't take much over that to overcome that needle and seat. Probably six or seven would do it. Um, and with today's tolerances on some of the stuff you get from overseas, I'm, I'm certain it's too much fuel pressure. So that was my theory. What I did is I went out to the parts store and got an adjustable fuel pressure regulator. You can pick these up online or at almost any parts store you go to. It's one to five pounds. All you have to do is push down and turn and there's three pounds. Push down and turn, there's three and a half pounds. It's pretty simple. Um, as soon as I did that, I haven't yet to have a problem with it flooding. So with that solution verified and the problem fixed, I can get rid of this rubber line that I put in as part of this test, and I can replace this old steel line going down to the pump because it's already rubber at the bottom, and it's a little rotten, and it's kind of janky. So I went out and got brand new 3 8 line. We're gonna run solid line from pump to here, and we're gonna put this regulator actually somewhere about here, just off the intake, and then we'll run steel line here, back up to the carburetor. All right, here is our old line. Solid steel line, lots of factory bends in it, but it hit the bottom. Somebody had troubles with it before because they cut it to hose. It shouldn't be, it should be solid steel. Uh, it's one of the reasons I didn't like it. Also, I don't know how old this one is. So what I did is I replaced it. What we did is copy the factory bends in that, but then we had to put our fuel pressure regulator in. So uh, I'll show you from the top how we connect to the carburetor and then try to get you a view from the bottom. Uh, it's just impossible to do it while I was making the line. So. I'll just show you how the finished product came out. All right, let's check it out. Starting from the carburetor, uh, I got a 12 inch section of 3 8 line, bent that in sort of an S curve so I could get the fuel pressure regulator where I wanted it, right here off the intake. As you can see, plenty of room, no heat, and I'm gonna make a bracket uh, out of steel that holds this off so it's not just dangling in space. To our fuel pressure regulator, then from fuel pressure regulator, I got a 40 inch 3 8 diameter line and I went and I started bending it to the factory specs going down this way under the alternator and then you dive underneath the power steering pump and then we'll go down to the fuel pump and check it out. This is not going to be the easiest thing in the world to see but right here's our power steering pump here's where the lines coming down. I've got about an inch maybe a little more off the block here this way you can see it's not touching plenty of space and it comes down towards the fuel pump this is where the last one turned to rubber because either it had a hole in it or they couldn't get it off so they just cut it but what I did was went ahead and made two 90s at the very bottom never mind this no I didn't bend that with the nut in the wrong place and then have to go cut another line to get another nut that never happens but if it does happen don't try to straighten this out you'll just ruin it and start over just leave this one here as some sort of nice accessory and go get another nut off another line. You're just gonna have to sacrifice it and flare that piece later. So either way, solid steel line into the pump. Let's go back up top. All right, that ends the tour of the brand new fuel line. As you can see, we shouldn't vapor lock. We've got plenty of air gap between all the hot surfaces. Uh, the only thing left to do is make a bracket to sort of hold this off just because this is a lot of space and I don't need it vibrating anything loose. Um, but that being said, fuel pressure regulator is installed uh, and that's it so just to recap 
if you know your carburetor is good, you know your float settings, needle and seat are good, nothing's sticking, and you put a mechanical fuel pump on it, or maybe the previous owner did recently, odds are it's putting out too much pressure. There's a couple fixes for that. You can keep going to the parts store, getting different fuel pumps, hoping one finally puts out less pressure, or you can get an adjustable fuel pressure regulator and install it in line, dial the pressure back to where you're comfortable and your car runs best. Uh, that's gonna do it for this time. I'm waiting on some parts to do front suspension work. Uh, I haven't really looked at the front brakes yet. But for now, it's nice and sunny out, and uh, I may just go take this thing for a drive and find out how bad these brakes really are. Assuming I live through that, we'll see you next time.